Hi friends, in this video we're going to be looking at narrowing down all of the different desires that you listed on pages 15 and 16 into the specific one, two, or three that you want to focus on in the upcoming quarter, in the upcoming three months. No one can try to grow in authenticity in every area of their life all at the same time. Now, we need to be mindful and intentional and focus on just a couple of different areas at a time. Otherwise, we're going to basically be like a rock skipping across the water. We're making a lot of movement, but we're not getting the depth. The Deep Wordly Planner is about you and I slowing down, naming just those few desires that we desire to grow in and going deepwardly with them. So, first of all, it's important for us to reverence that not everyone finds it easy to name their authentic desires and then to somehow discern and shift through them and get down to just a few. So I want to offer some additional suggestions and helps even beyond what I share on pages 16 and 17. I want to actually offer a couple of practices from Ignatius of Loyola. A couple of things that he mentions in his famous retreat manual, The Spiritual Exercises, that can be helpful for discerning. And they're really about the imagination once again, and they can be used in prayer or outside of prayer. The first suggestion would be to imagine that someone else whether a stranger or a friend or family member, is coming to you and saying to you, Tom, I've got all of these different desires that I wrote down on pages 15 and 16, and I'm struggling to know which three are the deepest, most important ones, the ones I want to focus on in the upcoming months. Can you give me some advice? And just imagine what advice you would give to that person. This idea from Ignatius of kind of stepping out of a situation and letting it be about someone else and then offering them advice is really quite wise. You and I tend to offer to others, very generously offer to others, what we don't very generously offer to ourselves. So by imagining ourselves stepping out of this discernment and letting it be about someone else, and then listening to what advice we would give them, we can often come to very profound clarity. Another recommendation Ignatius makes, also in the spiritual exercises, week two, is the idea of imagining that we're at the end of our life and imagining which of those, in this case, which of those desires that we put down we would most have wished we would have lived into now that we're on our deathbed, so to speak. There can be something very clarifying about imagining the end and looking back in retrospect, right? Uh, that sort of hindsight is twenty twenty type of uh, idea. And so you might find it very helpful to imagine yourself at the end of life looking back and looking at those desires that you wrote down and just being aware of which of those would I wished I would have chosen to focus on as a growth and a movement into authenticity during that time in the Deepwardly Planner. Now, on page 17, I offer some helpful reflection questions as a way of sifting through those desires and picking out one, two, or at the most three. So you might find that helpful. You might also find it helpful to jump to one of the appendices, actually a couple of the appendices in the back of the journal, on the Liturgy of Life. There's a liturgy of life for one week, and there's a liturgy of life for a whole month, where you're invited to actually just lay out the flow of a week in your life, to put down the flow of a month in your life. 
After doing that, you might find it helpful to go back to your list of different desires you've noticed in your heart and see which ones, which one, two, or three of those desires would best help to deepen the flow of your liturgy of life in a week or a month. In other words, just having that laid out and mapped out might very well give a sense of, hmm, this particular desire would be helpful. Let me give an example. Let's say you put together your liturgy of life for a month, and you're looking over the course of your month, and you realize you are way too busy, that there's hardly any time for self-care. And then you notice that you wrote down as a desire, a desire for deeper self-care. Well, right there, that's helping you to find clarity. That the busyness of your life is part of what is stirring up this deep, authentic desire for greater self-care. So that might very well be one of the desires that you want to focus on in the upcoming three months. So my point being, you might find the liturgy of life for a week and a month in the back of the plan are very, very helpful. Also, I want to point out one last thing, and that is on page 16, I note that you might pick your three desires to focus on simply as the ones that you marked your top three priority, or you might want to put them into some meta categories. For example, you might want to pick one desire that's more focused on spiritual, personal, or relational, and then pick out another desire that's focused on health, wellness, or recreation, and then pick out a third desire that's focused on work, service, or school. This can be particularly meaningful if you are doing the Deepwardly Journal with a group. Let's say the leadership team at your uh, office is going through this together. Well, then to have everyone pick out one desire that's focused on work can be really meaningful when you gather together once a week or every month to share. Or if you're doing it with your faith formation group to make sure that everyone picked out a desire around spiritual growth. That'll really help to facilitate meeting regularly and sharing how you're growing in authenticity around that particular desire. So I hope those suggestions and ideas are helpful as you name the one, two, or three desires that you most deeply want to focus on in the upcoming months.